Welcome to the Wilson Wealth Show, a thought-provoking show about building wealth in the new economy. Each week, members of the Wilson Wealth team and their guests will discuss how to navigate the world of personal finance, stocks, real estate, and entrepreneurship to help you build wealth in the new economy. And now, here is your host, Sierra Makash. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Wilson Wealth Show. My name is Sierra Makash, and today I have Miss Ablavi with me. How are you doing today, Ablavi? Doing well. How are you? I'm doing great. Woo. And today we are going to talk about um, women in business, what it's like being a woman in the industry, the obstacles, and some positives that we found, too. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into it. Uh, Ablavi made an excellent point before we started recording, and I would love for her to go ahead and go over that again. Ablavi? Sure. Well, um, as we talk about women in business, I think it's really important to determine, are you, are you doing what you're supposed to be doing? Um, you know, what fulfills you and what is, you know, your purpose? I think so often, you know, there is this set trajectory for us. It's like you finish high school, you go to college, you major in something, you get a great job, you get married, you live happily ever after. However, there's a lot of things that happen <laughs> in between, you know, and I think sometimes that we don't take the time to figure out, is this something I really want to do or am I just doing it because mom and dad want me to do it. I feel like it makes a lot of money and things of that nature. So I feel like our first step is to figure out what brings us fulfillment, you know, um, and how that aligns with the type of life we want to have. And just making sure that we're doing what it is, you know, we desire to do and um, you know what we're supposed to be doing. So I think it's important that no matter what the age you are, I don't think it's a young, young thing or anything like that. I think that you have some older people who just landed into stuff and it's like they just keep doing the same thing over and over again, but that's not what they really wanna do or they may feel stuck you know, or what have you. And I would just implore you to just take some time to just sit back and evaluate, um, do I need to course correct? And if I do, that's okay. You know, figure out a, a game plan and then proceed accordingly. Because, you know, one of the things that really um, is concerning to me is like being 80 plus years old and looking back and saying, woulda, coulda, shoulda, you right. know? Um, so just making sure that you are doing what fulfills you and, and what, um, what is aligned with your purpose, I think is, is definitely something that needs to be evaluated. So, Right. I cannot agree with that more. I am 25 years old and I'm still trying to get my undergraduate degree. <laughs> <laughs> right. Because and that's okay. I, yeah, and it is okay. And it took me a long time to realize that it was okay. Right. Um, for sure. Yeah, it's um it's one of those things where I started over uh, I can't tell you how many times and I was doing things because it was what my parents wanted, because it made money, but I wasn't truly happy or passionate about it. And I can say at twenty five years old I finally found what I want to do. And you kind of have to push back those thoughts like, oh, I should be further ahead. I should be doing better. I should be at a different stage because it's all BS. You know, right. there is no timeline for you, for anybody. There, there's no such thing as a timeline. You know, we're all living a lot longer. You have plenty of time to figure out what you want to do in life. So, yeah, it's about not getting discouraged. And I can also say very personally, um, as a woman, too, I do have a mother who is pretty far up in the corporate world. You know, she's a VP of sales of a very big company. And I really did feel that pressure of, you know, I need to prove myself. You know, I need to be right. as successful as she is. And I felt like I had to do more to be taken seriously and to reach mm -hmm. that level because she fought and struggled for her position. 
And so I was doing things that I wasn't really passionate about. I w that wasn't really in line with my life because I felt that I needed to prove something because I was a woman who was the daughter of a very successful woman, you know, and yeah. it happens, but <laughs> you have to stay true to yourself first of all, and really think about what you want to do with your life first, you know, before you jump into something and spend God knows how much money on a degree. <laughs> sure. Yeah. So that's a great point. I really love that we started there because we want to get that out of the way that there's Definitely. no timeline. Make sure what you're doing is what you want to do and take a breath you know, above all else. <laughs> yeah. No, definitely. And let me ask you this year. So mm -hmm. do you think that that pressure was like, where, where, where was that pressure coming from exactly? Cause I think you bring a, a bring up a good point. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, that a lot of people go through, it's like, they feel like they should be at this certain level, mm -hmm. maybe because their parents are, or because their peers are, or society says so. So was it like, where was it coming from exactly, the pressure that you felt? Well, it was coming from a few different sources. I will say I, you know, did feel the pressure from, you know, my mom herself because she wanted the best for me. Sure. She wanted me to be in a position that she's at. She's very financially stable. She doesn't need anybody else. Right. And because of that, she's always been able to provide for her children no matter what's happened in her life, you know. Right. And she wanted the same for me. She didn't want me to be dependent on somebody else, which right. I, you know, completely agree with and will do. But, you know, I felt the pressure to do it on different terms, um, to do it maybe in the same way that she did, which I've realized just doesn't work for me. I mm -hmm. also, you know, I felt that pressure, I would say, from a relationship I was in as well. Okay. You know, I was with somebody who wanted me to be, very successful and in a way to where he wouldn't have to work for very long, which is a whole nother conversation. <laughs> interesting. Um, yeah, it is interesting. You know, you find that, um, I will say <laughs> that relationship really kind of opened my eyes a little bit. And I realized, you know, I'm being pushed in all kinds of different directions because of what people want from me. Right. You know, and I felt those pressures because I didn't want to disappoint anyone. Mm -hmm. And I also felt, you know, societal pressures because, you know, being a woman in any type of industry is, it's hard, you know, it's different. You come across different obstacles. There's positives, but there is a lot of negatives as well. And I just wanted to be as successful as I can be and push forward in any, any way that I could. And I was going down a road that really wasn't for me because of that, you right. know? So there were, there was pressure from all different directions, you know? So taking a step back and following that first advice that you gave really did help me out a lot for sure. Yeah. You know, I find that interesting because as I think back, of course I'm 38, mm -hmm. I'll be 39 uh, this year. And um, as I think back, I, my upbringing of, was of such where having grown up in West Africa, Liberia specifically, um, very different um, so society from the U.S. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I grew up with just a lot of things that people take for granted. Uh, you know, I, I'll, tell, I'll tell my husband things like, well, you know, we had the seven bedroom house. I just thought that was normal. You know, in Liberia, we had, we call it like house boy, house girl. The equivalent here in the U.S. is like a, a butler, a nanny, that kind of thing. My grandmother was an entrepreneur. My grandfather had served for many year, years in the Liberian government. He was a diplomat. Um, my father was like the um, minister of education and things of that nature. So, I grew up with a lot of privilege, not realizing it was privileged. Uh, yes. And um, then coming to the United States because of civil war, I was, I was born in upstate New York, went to Liberia when I was a baby and then came back when I was eight years old because they had a civil war and then coming back. And then my mom is here in the U S she's living in an apartment. There is no more house boy, house girl, seven bedroom house, none of that. <laughs> so my perspective about success really, 
uh, went from one extreme to the next. Mm -hmm. So I grew up with the mentality of always wanting to do my best. Um, you know, I wanted to be stable, but my focus wasn't necessarily, oh, I have to be, you know, significantly wealthy, so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until later, I didn't feel that kind of pressure um, from family. It was just to do well. Um, Liberian culture really emphasizes education, right? So yeah. the education was like a big deal. Um, make sure you get your education. Um, but the opulence that I grew up with in my earlier years just were not, was not the same as when I came to the States. So my perspective of uh, financial well-being shifted until I got older and I realized, wow, the more money you have, the more options you have, you know? And then from a personal perspective, uh, the life I wanted to live shifted into making sure that I was as financially successful as I could possibly be because I just saw how the dynamics were different at a certain income level. Right. Um, so yeah, so I just think that that's interesting. Yeah, no, it seems that we both kind of had similar pressures that really we put on ourselves more than anything else. Is mm -hmm. I will say that, you know, now that I'm finding what I'm good at, my mom is pretty supportive and sure. she's she's really fine with it. She's just like, I don't care what you do as long as you make enough to make a living. Yeah. That's all I care about. I'm over here thinking I got to be the next CEO of whatever, <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. you know, putting all those pressures on myself. So it sounds like you went through something very similar. And I will say that, um, you know, the ex-boyfriend that I mentioned earlier, he also grew up in another country where his parents were very well off, very similar situation. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he came to America to um, also escape uh, war. And he, at 12 years old, and you know, I think that that might be where that came from, where he wanted to be very successful. He worked very hard, but he also wanted his partner to be equally successful. And I think it was because he was trying to grasp at what he had when he was a child. Right. And, you know, things are very different in America. It takes a lot to get to that point. You know, it's a lot of struggling. <laughs> um, and you, you wouldn't think so, but it's it's completely true. So I do have personal experience with you know, my boyfriend was in a very, very similar, uh, or ex-boyfriend, very similar situation. And, you know, it's completely different when he goes and visits, too. It's still the same. Right. You know, and then he comes over here and he's just like, well, why can't, why couldn't I have that here? You know, right. you know, you need to make more money. I need to make more money. And it became almost like a, it, it became very toxic, I would right. say, because it was like, you need, I need more success. You need more success. We need to keep going. And I was, and you know, I wasn't happy right. with the level of success that he wanted. I was like, I don't want to spend my entire life working like this. This isn't, this isn't happiness. This isn't good. You know, I want to be successful, but on my own terms. Right. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's talk about um, some of the obstacles that we have faced. Um, I will say personally, I had a very recent obstacle that I didn't really think existed anymore. Um, cause you know, we are much more progressive as a country and we are more progressive, um, worldwide than we used to be. Um, and I found that very recently I got a very good position. Um, I am still in college and I joined an organization recently that had an open exec board and, you know, I applied for secretary, and I ended up getting president of the organization. And this is a very big organization that exists all over the nation. So I was very excited. I was like, oh, I can't believe that I got this. You know, I, it was amazing. Very next day, we had a meeting with all of the branches, their presidents and vice presidents. So again, I got president. Um, I went to the meeting. Everything went really well. I met my vice president, who is a man. And, you know... During the meeting, he was just like, so you're the president? And I was like, yeah, I'm Sierra. It's so nice to meet you. Now I'm all excited. And he looks me, looks at me and goes, I hate you, and turns around. Yeah. And I know. I was like, oh, what? That's um, not nice. It is not nice. Um, but I kind of 
you know, oh, he's probably just joking, like, oh, I hate you, you know. Um, and then after the meeting, we were kind of walking and talking together. He's in the same degree as me. So I was like, oh, my gosh, it's so great that, you know, I kind of know you. You're in a few of my classes. I can't wait to get to know you and work with you. This is going to be great. And he was like, yeah, so what, um, what do you call it? What, um, oh my gosh, I completely forgot the word. Basically like, uh, where are you at in college? Right. And, oh, I was, I said, oh, I'm a junior. And he said, oh, great. I'm a sophomore, so I can have your job when you leave. <laughs> wow. Yes. I was like, wow so it's just it was a bit eye-opening and I'm not gonna lie it upset me because you know I wanted to be a good leader I wanted to give off a good impression you know you think that everything's gonna go really well <laughs> especially right. when it's you know your first time and you're like all right well I'm gonna be a great leader I'm gonna do this I'm gonna do this for the organization or whatever job it is I'm gonna kill it and it, it, it was a little discouraging that the person who was supposed to be my number two clearly doesn't like me and wants my job you know yeah so yeah I remember calling my mom right after that on the way home and telling her about it and she gave me the best advice that I've ever gotten I think um she said Sierra you have to get used to people hating you you absolutely have to get used to it and they're gonna get used to you just work hard be a good leader know that there's gonna be negativity whether it be because you're a woman, whether it be because you're young, it doesn't matter. Just get used to it and do better. And I was like, yeah, that's exactly what I'm going to do. You know, they're all going to get used to me and I'm going to do great things for that organization. And that's kind of the mindset that you have to have. You can't let things like that bring you down because it's very easy for stuff like that to bring you down because, you know, I didn't do anything wrong. And most of the time when you come across things like that, People don't do anything wrong. It's just kind of um, whether it be jealousy or whether it be um, something else, you know, people just tend to tear other people down. I don't know yeah. why, but, you know, it's something that has gotten better for sure. This is an isolated event. I was very surprised. <laughs> right, right. No, definitely. And I just feel like, you know, the only person you can control is you. Yeah. And, um, it's good to know where people stand. Yes. So at least, at least it's no secret how he feels. That's and, true. Yeah. And you can just proceed accordingly. But I mean, to your mom's point, you know, there are always going to be people who don't want to see you shine mm -hmm. and see you do well. And, and that's, that's really stuff going on within them. That has nothing to do with you. Yeah. Um, so all you can do is just keep being who you are that's interesting that you should bring that up because it reminds me of having been in human resources and being privy to um, salaries and, you know, what people make and all that stuff. And then seeing the disparity between what I make um, in comparison to other teammates where you're in an environment where you're bringing value um, comparable to a coworker, if not more than that coworker but then seeing how your salary doesn't reflect that, you know? Yeah. And in my case, I brought it up to my manager who happens to be a woman and she pretty much looked me in the eye and said, well, I feel like although you're getting paid less, you know, that that is aligned with the particular role that you're in. Mm. Um, so just having to deal with those realities is just, um, it just comes with the territory, so mm -hmm. to speak. And all you can continue to do is do a good job. But that's why I'm a very big proponent of having more than one stream of income. Um, because, you know, you, you just don't want to depend on one thing, particularly if that one thing is not compensating you as you should be. But even if it is compensating you like you should be, um, what if, I mean, look at the world we're living in now. People, their, their lives were one way a month ago, and now for some it's drastically changed, right? Exactly. So I think it's really important to position yourself to where you have more than one stream of income. And I know that might sound, sound trite or what have you. However, I think it's something that 
people should very seriously consider because, I mean, again, having a human resources background, it's not uncommon to see people get laid off from organizations, whether they've been there for a year or they've been there for 38 years. Right, yeah. And everything, and everything in between. So you have to understand that one day your number could get called. This is just the world we live in. And you don't want to find yourself unprepared, particularly if you are, you know, you're like a mom or a dad and you have people depending on you to live. So, so yeah. No, I mean, th- those are really, really good points. Absolutely. It is, I think that nowadays it is really important to have more than one stream of income, um, whether it comes from you or it comes from a partner or both of you have more than one stream of income. Um, it really is, unfortunately, what it takes to make it now um, and to have financial security, you know, because you just never know what's going to happen in the world. And that is very relevant to what's going on today. You know, a lot of people I know are getting laid off because of the virus. You know, things are, you know, Things are looking a little grim for some people, but I think that we're all going to get through it just fine. You know, right. I think it, 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 it'll be, it'll be all right for everybody. I really do believe that, that, you know, we'll all band together and get through it. Um, but on that note, how about we end on a few positives? <laughs> of course, of course. So what I will say is that I think that the gender gap has gotten a lot better over the years, especially the way that it was 25 years ago when my mom first started to where she is now, things are completely different. And I will say that, um, you know, as a VP of her company um, for this side of the country and she has a VP for the company for the other side of the country, they make the exact same. And she told me the other day that that is the first time in her life that that's ever happened, that she's made the exact same as a man who does the exact same job. Right. And, you know, I've seen in the news, like, there are even a few, like, female CEOs that, where that gap is being closed. They're getting pay raises. So I will say here in 2020, things are changing pretty significantly. And we are seeing more equality in business for women, for sure. Definitely, definitely. And just to echo those sentiments, I feel like little girls growing up now, I don't feel like they feel like there are any limitations, you know? Yeah. I mean, they've seen things, you know, as children that I didn't see until I was adult. an adult, you know, you had a woman running for president. You've had women that have ran for president, you know. Um, you have female CEOs. Oh, you yeah. have women business owners. I mean, the list goes on and on. You know, are there disparities? Yes. Um, is the pendulum swinging? Absolutely. Is it our time? Absolutely. And I feel like, you know, little girls and grown women are growing up with this perspective of, hey, whatever I want to do, I can do it. Yeah. And it's true. I mean, just recently, what, Greece got its first female president? Yeah, that's amazing. I know. Like, you know, things are really changing. And, you know, I think these little girls, this new generation is going to grow up knowing that they actually can do anything. Especially, right. you know, parenting has changed as well. So a lot of people are telling their little girls, like, yeah, go be president, go be CEO, go be whatever you want, you know, and it's enlightening for sure. Definitely. I'm, I'm proud of the progress that we've, you know, all achieved in recent years. I really am. And I think it's just going to get better. <laughs> yeah, the future definitely looks bright. So that's awesome. It does. Well, thank you so much, Ablavi. Um, This has been Women and Money, and we'll see you guys next time. Have a great day. Thank you everyone for listening to today's podcast. Please visit us at www.wilsonwealth.com on Instagram and Twitter at Wilson Wealth and on Facebook at www.facebook.com slash Wilson Wealth for more information about us and the company. We'll see you guys next week on the Wilson Wealth Show. Thank you for listening to the Wilson Wealth Show, a thought provoking show about building wealth in the new economy. Each week, members of the Wilson Wealth team and their guests will discuss how to navigate the world of stocks, real estate, and entrepreneurship to help you build wealth in the new economy. Please join us next time on the Wilson Wealth Show.